Hello and welcome to the 24th episode of my 1860 Munich career mode. Um, it's been a little delayed. was trying to work on some Ultimate Team stuff and the, um, a lot of the footage got screwed up. So this is out a little later than I would have liked it to be. But our first game against Union Berlin, we're still in the January transfer window. So looking to wrap up a couple moves. Aramir, um, a player that I wanted to get at for our... Uh, to uh, wanted to get a holding midfielder, so I went after Aramir, the Brazilian. Um, this game against Union Berlin, they gave us some problems when we played them last year, and there's Makos hitting the bar um, in the 30, 33rd, 34th minute. Um, towards the end of the first half, here's Benzia breaking in down the left-hand side. Cuts, gets by the defender, cuts it back. Um, tried to get a shot. No, he passed it off to Piazzone. Piazzone. Um, couldn't get a shot off there and later on in the game 75th minute fast forwarding all the way here um, finds Parenson. Parenson chips it in somehow he wasn't offside stops the first shot that's a tough goal to give up for us Parenson gets the goal in the 77th minute um, putting us down 1-0 on the road um, but towards the end of the game we really have a knack for scoring late goals um, not sure if it's something to do with FIFA being FIFA with their, uh, you know, a lot of times goals get scored a lot late in games. Um, but Benzia doing some work here, puts it in the corner past the goalkeeper in the 90th minute, um, getting us a goal there, very much needed goal um, to level it at one. And then we just tried to do whatever we could to get the ball out and hold on to that one point excuse me so we get out of Union Berlin we leave there with one point and Armir got our contract offer um, four years ten thousand dollars a week um, he accepted so that would be um, a nice signing for us considering there was no one next to Makos there um, I decided to go after this guy Marco Royas um, I know who he is um, I wanted to search for him because I figured he'd be a good super sub type of player. Um, he's very fast, doesn't really have a lot of stamina, um, but he's got that five-star weak foot and uh, the four-star skills. Could really play him on either wing. Could be a good substitute for Stoppelkamp or, or if I wanted to play Stoppelkamp elsewhere or Royas as an attacking midfielder. So I sent the club, sent the... Um, Sent the original place, transfer Brown offer Brownswick to NEC. Um, Nijmegen, I believe, has how you pronounce that. Um, they said they wanted 1.6 million. We decided to go with it. Um, he's originally, I believe, he currently plays for the Melbourne Victory in the A League. Um, but we decided to go along with it. I really wanted to get him because obviously Stoppelkamp not getting any younger might sell him off sometime down the road. He's our cap. Might be, you know, he's one of our leaders. So, um, I don't know. We'll see what we do with Stoppelkamp. But right now, I wanted to have, um, wanted to have Royas as a substitute. Um, and Emmanuel Dekeko ended up leaving the club for a Saudi Arabian team. That took us into our second game of the episode. This one against Erzgeberga Al, Aramir's debut. Stoppel comp here. A nice ball to Benzia. Benzia nearly hits a nice volley. This game was incredibly boring. Um, not much of anything going on in this game. Duker 2 having a left-footed effort, but it's blocked. Probably wouldn't have been on goal anyway, considering Duker 2 has only the two-star weak foot. Um, all the way to the 90th minute. Like I said, not much really happened in this game. We were just doing what we could, didn't really get many opportunities, that Benzia volley was the best opportunity we had, um, just couldn't make anything else happen, and we ended up having to live with a nil-nil draw at home, Oramir's no debut the the um, does not get us a win, we can't get a win in his first game, which is unfortunate, um, transfer offer was accepted. It just kind of got cut out there. Um, they accepted the $1.6 million bid for uh, Marco Royas. And Al Shula, the team that I sold Dikeko to, is the same team that comes after Ronald Lelan. And look at this. Our captain, our leader, our holding midfielder, our rock at the back, wants to leave. 
that that really sucks just because we're doing well we're fighting for promotion and now he wants to leave so the board also ended up saying a little later you'll see it in a little bit they said you have to have him get him out of the club by the end of January um, Borussia Mönchengladbach and Borussia Dortmund end up giving us offers for him I decide what I'm going to do I'll counter offer both bids and I decided to put um, seven million dollars so quite a bit obviously Dortmund can pay it because they have the money um, I don't know about Bor Borussia Mönchengladbach but I decide seven million dollars of each if one of them wants to accept that offer then fine and if not if they both want to make um, another counter offer for somewhere in between what they originally offered and the seven million dollars whoever has the higher offer I'll sell off to that team um, so there it is there's the email board says sell Makos no matter what um, which really sucks because I really enjoyed having him as the captain I was hoping he'd stay and continue to be a member of this team up until um, you know up into the next season if we can get into the Bundesliga so we're gonna have to go on without him um, Roy S it ha happened quite often where he uh, declined the offers uh, I didn't keep them all in there because it was just kind of pointless um, so eventually there it is Borussia Mönchengladbach offers six million Borussia Dortmund offers six million seven hundred and ten thousand dollars so I will be selling Makos off to Borussia Dortmund. And that will be the end of the Makos era, which kind of sucks. Um, but we got a lot of money for him, so it's not all bad. Pedro Azagu, I was just offloading some of my players that don't really play too often. Sold him to Bolcom. Probably won't play at all there either, but that's not my problem. So, Makos is gone he has gone to Borussia Dortmund they paid way more than he what he's worth not that I care um, that's their problem now um, Azogu also his deal has been finalized for him to go to Bochum Barcelona wants to buy Kerbrat screw you not happening he means way too much to this team considering we just lost one of our best defensive assets and this was the final deal. I probably paid way too much for him, but we can definitely afford him right now. I know he's probably going to grow a little bit more, um, so it'll be exciting to have, have him. Um, Ibrahima Yatara, I looked amongst some young players, um, preferably defensive midfielders. Um, he's six foot six, 19 years old from Guinea. Um, got decent stats and he's probably just gonna get better because he's 19 he also has five star skill moves which for a defensive midfielder is pretty strange um, so we decided to make a deal for him he plays for Stuttgart and he is in the last year of his contract decided to offer half a million dollars for Yatara and after all that transfer uh, craziness we had to play against the best team in the league at home um, coming into this game, we were 10 points back. Um, Cologne still 15 wins out of 17 games. They haven't drawn yet. Um, here's Abinia Say doing some work early on. Eventually finds Benzia. Benzia has a go. It gets blocked. Benzia with a nice little scoop turn here. Tries to find Abinia Say. He does, but Abini heads it wide. Um, 26th minute here. Cologne moving up the field and even just playing against Cologne you can tell that they are the best team in the Bundesliga too they're far better than any of the other teams and Christopher Schindler what the hell are you doing you just scores Schindler is nowhere near this guy um, just the guy's been shocking in some certain instances in this season um, which is really lousy but Almost right away, we fire back. Benzia on the left foot, puts it in the corner. 1-1 in the 30th minute. We strike back almost instantly. Um, all the way to the 90th minute, it ended up 1-1. We had to take three draws in this episode. Three draws out of three games, and we lost our captain. So, not the best episode you could ask for. Um, yeah. 
So 1-1, one, one, that's not a bad result against that team. Um, there it is, Royask accepts the conditions in his contract. And we decide that we're going to bring him on as a member of 1860 Munich, which will be exciting. Um, and next, Stuttgart said, offer us $650,000 and we will let you talk to Ibrahima Yatara. Um, so we decided to do that. And now we will go into the um, contract contract uh, negotiations with the player um, Stuttgart accepted the deal so for four thousand four years our offer is sent to Yatara but he declines because uh, I don't think I've ever come up with this come you know and face with this um, Yatara says I don't want to come to your team because I feel like it's a step down he plays in the Bundesliga um, doesn't want to come down to the second division, which is weird because at 64 overall, I'm sure he never plays at Stuttgart. I'm almost positive. Um, so we had to make a couple offers for this guy. And this was one of our offers. I don't think he accepted that one. I found another player who could be a good winger, good substitute. David Hoopschman, 19-year-old player from the Czech Republic. Five-star skills, five-star weak foot. He can play on either side. Um, could probably even play as an attacking midfielder. Um, so, decided I would go after this guy. I was going to get him on loan, but I saw he was in the last year of his deal. Um, so I decided, hey, I'll put in a uh, put in a transfer for this guy since Makos is gone. Um, we've, we're trying to replace him with a young player. Um, and again, Yatara doesn't want to come to 1860 because we don't play in the first division. And it's kind of getting annoying at this point. So we offer him $10,000 a week. And I believe that is the one that he ends up accepting, and he does. So we make the deal there to bring on the young defensive midfielder. Hopefully he'll be good for us. Um... FC Nuremberg says that you have to give us a little bit more for Hoopschman. They want $750,000, which is not bad for a player um, of Hoopschman's caliber. He's only 19 as well. He can only only grow. He'll probably be pretty decent. Um, I could probably use Piazzone as an attacking midfielder. Use him as, you know, use him as, use him somewhere else. So Hoopschman or Royas can get into the side, so we accept the deal. We eventually negotiate for $9,000 a week for Hoopschman. To end the episode, some scouting reports. Um, this scouting report in the Netherlands has been terrible. Um, we haven't got anyone who looks, like, decent at all. Um, so we have one more month. Hopefully we'll be able to find a decent player. I don't know. We'll see. Um, the other scouting report, um, we did get find one decent player, 16-year-old Mark andre Cordy. Um, there he is right there. Um, 16 years old, decided I would sign him, and we'd scout him enough to see what position he's going to play for the club until we get him into the first team. But uh, some international, um, there's some international call-ups there. Um, if you'd like to like, comment, subscribe, it would be much appreciated. Um, that's all for this episode, and I will see you next time.